I'm back. We're going to talk about the urogenital system now. Actually, just the first part here. So we're going to start just by defining the urogenital system. It's actually two systems put together. It's the excretory system and the reproductive system. But they're really, close, really closely related and even share some of the same structures. So we often study them together and call it the urogenital system. Um, so you've got the excretory system, that's the uro part, the genital system, um, that's the reproductive, or the reproductive system, that's the genital part, so urogenital. Okay, so we're just going to talk about the uro part today, the excretory system. So excretion is the process of eliminating wastes from the body. So it's just, how do we get wastes out of the body? So we know that our circulatory system is going to take wastes from our cells to, for example, our lungs, um, to breathe that out. Um, those wastes can also be things like salts, though, and they can be things like water. We might have too much water in our body that we need to get rid of. Um, carbon dioxide from our lungs, other chemicals that we need to get rid of. Okay, so your excretory system actually does um, include your skin. Your skin is part of your excretory system because when you sweat, you get rid of extra water and you get rid of different salts that you don't need. Your lungs are part of your excretory system. That's kind of weird, right? That seems kind of gross. Um, but your lungs help you excrete carbon dioxide. That's a waste product that your body needs to get rid of. Um, your kidneys are going to remove salts, water, and other chemicals such as urea. Now, urea is not the same as urine. Urea is different from urine. It's a component of urine. Um, urea is just a nitrogenous waste product created by your liver. But your kidneys are going to help um, take care of that for you. Um, so, uh, okay. so your kidneys, we're going to focus on your kidneys today. They remove your waste products from your blood. They also maintain the pH of your blood. They regulate how much water is in your blood, the water content of your blood. Because they're regulating the water content of your blood, they're also regulating your blood volume, right? So if you have one pitcher of Kool-Aid, but then you add a whole bunch more water to it, you could have two pitchers of Kool-Aid. So how much water is in your blood is also going to affect the blood volume. Okay, so blood is going to come into the kidneys via the renal arteries. Anytime you see renal, renal refers to uh, kidneys. So renal arteries. Now they're arteries because they go away. What do they go away from? They go away from the heart, okay? So renal arteries go away from the heart, but to the kidneys. They're gonna go into the kidneys. But remember that away always means are we going away from the heart, okay? So renal arteries go away from the heart, but into the kidneys. The blood gets filtered in the kidneys, and then the blood is gonna go out of the kidneys via the renal veins, okay? So in through the renal arteries, filtered, out through the renal veins, okay? So there are smaller units within the kidney called nephrons, and the nephron is the functional unit within the kidney. There are two steps to what a nephron does. There's filtration, where everything gets squeezed out of the blood, and reabsorption, where the things you still need are allowed back in. So it's like when you need to clean out your closet when your mom finally loses it on you and you have to clean out the closet in your bedroom, and so you just empty everything out of the closet so that you have like a brand new, fresh, clean closet, and then you decide what you need and you only put that stuff back in and everything else goes to the Goodwill or goes to your little brother or sister or goes to the garbage dumpster, or whatever, okay? It's the same idea, okay? So um, more specifically, if we zoom even more on the nephron, okay? So here is the renal artery where blood is coming from the heart to the kidney and it's gonna come into the nephron and it's gonna come into this network of capillaries that are all bundled up called the glomerulus. Okay, say glomerulus. Glomerulus, that's a good word to say once you get used to it. Okay, and here at the glomerulus is where there's gonna be intense pressure and everything, basically everything except blood cells, including water, water, salts, ions, anything that's there is gonna get squeezed out of the blood. And it's all gonna get collected in this thing called the Bowman's capsule. And so the Bowman's capsule collects everything. So you squeeze everything out of the blood, um, out of the, except the blood cells out of the blood. It all goes to the Bowman's capsule. And then what happens is that you have this travel of the blood continuing through these capillaries, very closely associated with this tubule here. And this tubule is carrying all that stuff that we call filtrate. And certain things are gonna be allowed back into the blood and other things aren't. So as they travel sort of side by side, the blood is gonna decide what it wants to take from that filtrate and it's gonna leave what it doesn't need from that filtrate. And it's all gonna depend on the body's needs. 
It's all going to depend on what's the pH of the blood. Do we need to get some ions in or get some ions out so we can keep the pH the same? What's the volume of the blood? Do we need to get some water in? Do we need to get rid of some water? What it's Your body is constantly managing, monitoring those things and deciding do we pull those things back in or do we leave them so that we can get rid of them, okay? All that stuff that got squeezed out and didn't get reabsorbed, that got filtered but not reabsorbed, is going to stay in this thing called a collecting tubule. And all of those collecting tubules are going to take their, now, what's urine. Those collecting tubules are all going to come together, just like capillaries all come together to make um, uh, veins. Those collecting tubules are all going to come back together, or those little tubules are all going to come back together to collecting tubules. They're all going to come back together to make this, to this tube called the ureter. And the urine is going to leave the kidney from the ureter. And you've got two ureters, one on each side. So urine leaves each kidney through the ureters, goes to the urinary bladder. And the urinary bladder is the place where the urine gets held. And when the body is ready to release the urine, the urine leaves through this other tube called the urethra. Okay. Now, I know that's a little bit confusing because they're both U words, ureter and urethra, but you can do it. Just keep following uh, you know, the rules of studying where you look at it over and over and over again and you'll remember it, it'll be fine, okay? So again, from the renal artery into the kidney, filtration and reabsorption in the nephron, back out through the renal um, vein, sorry, uh, and then out to, uh, that. the blood goes back through the renal vein, um, and then the urine goes from the kidney through the ureters to the urinary bladder, out through the urethra. And then remember, that's another thing that is a reflex. So the um, sphincter that's there at the bottom of your urinary bladder and your urethra, is that's a reflex. And so again, when we're potty training kids, we're teaching them to control a reflex. Okay, drugs typically get cleaned out of the body by the liver and the kidneys. So liver and kidneys work together to get drugs out of the body. But since they do the filtering, the drugs and their byproducts are excreted in the urine. So the drugs themselves or the byproducts of the drugs come out in the urine, and that's why they can use urine as a drug test, because your body gets rid of all that stuff it doesn't need, including the drugs that you didn't use um, or didn't process through your body, or you did process and created these other things um, called metabolites. And that's what you can, that's why you can use urine as a, as a test for drugs. If you have salts that aren't dissolved in the water of your um, blood or of your urine, they can actually crystallize. And when they crystallize, they make these little things that look like, you know, rock candy, but they are not rock candy. Um, they're actually kidney stones. And kidney stones are really, really painful um, because if they block free, they can block the ureter. And so going from the kidney to the ureter in order to get to the urinary bladder those kidney stones get in there. If you look at them, that's not very hospitable. That's not something you want going through this super narrow tube. And so it's really, 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 really uncomfortable. And typically it's that kidney to ureter part that's super painful. Once it hits the bladder and then and goes out through the urethra, it's not as bad. I mean, I think it still hurts, but it's nowhere near as bad as the pain that's in the ureter. All right, you can actually do just fine with only one kidney. Having no kidneys is a problem. You've got a couple of options. You can get a transplant, so maybe you can get somebody else who will give you a kidney, or you can do dialysis. And dialysis is basically where a machine does the work of the kidneys for you. Um, so instead of your blood going to your kidneys, getting filtered and coming back in, your blood goes to a machine, gets filtered and comes back in. The problem with that is you have to go like three to four times a week for four or five hours at a time, and you just have to sit there while this machine filters your blood for you. Um, it's a major issue. So. Um, if someone you love ever um, needs a kidney and you are a match for that, maybe it's a thing to consider to be a kidney donor for that person. All right, so what happens if you drink lots of water? You should be able to work through this with me. So if the water content of the blood is high, that means the environment around the cells has a high water concentration. So what does that mean is going to happen with that water? If the water's not removed, it's going to go into the cells via osmosis. And if too much water goes into the cells via osmosis, we know that what happens is our cells will explode. Luckily, though, we have kidneys. And so our kidneys pull out all of the extra water. The extra water goes out in our urine. And that means you have to pee a lot, but at least your cells aren't exploding. 
Okay, so we prevent that osmosis coming in and making our cells so big they explode. Now, this is where that woman in the Hold Your We For A We contest had trouble um, because her kidneys weren't able to keep up with all of the water she was dumping into her body. And so then she caused um, that sort of water poisoning to happen to herself. Okay, but what about when you eat really salty food? So the salt content of your blood is really, really high. That means the environment around your cells has a really high salt concentration. So what does that mean is gonna happen at the level of your cells? Yeah, that means water is gonna leave your cells. Your cells are gonna give off water to the environment. Okay, well, if your cells give off water to the environment, your blood pressure is gonna go up because you're gonna, you've increased your blood volume. Okay, so eating salty food puts your cells in a salty environment. Your cells now give off some of their water, which of course is their own issue. They don't have that water now but they also give off that water to your blood. And now your blood has a really high volume, which means you're pushing on the arterial walls harder. Um, if that were allowed to continue, your cells would shrivel up and die and your arteries would wear out. Um, so you would put too much pressure on your blood vessels with all that blood volume. Luckily, your kidneys take the salt out of the blood. They let the cells get their water back and the extra salt goes out in the urine, okay? There you go. That's the excretory system. I bet you can't wait for the next part.